that. Okay, looks like we're live. And same as he's done. is being live streamed on our NEISD Council of PTA's Facebook page. PTA's mission is to make every child's potential a reality by engaging and empowering families and communities to advocate for all children. Um, the expectation of our audience today is that you listen respectfully to our moderator and candidates. No clapping, outburst, or gestures, please. We encourage you to take pictures of this event and post them to your social media with the hashtag PTA votes. Our moderator today is Deanna Rickabal. She's served four years on the Almost Park City Council and has served as the mayor of Almost Park for the last two years. She is the former PTSO president at Alamo Heights High School. She has also served as the chairman of the Travis Appraisal Review Board for two terms. We're so pleased to have her here today with us to moderate this um, forum for single member district six and I'm gonna turn it over to her now. Thank you, Debbie, for that introduction and for having me here today. I want to start by thanking everyone that's here in the audience today and those watching online, and for the candidates for making yourselves available. Elections matter, and being an informed voter is paramount. So that you're all aware, all candidates who filed for NEISD School Board Trustee Single Member District 6 were invited to participate and those who indicated that they would participate were provided with the questions ahead of time. Today we have with us Terry Chidji and Steve Hillier. Okay, candidates, these are the rules. We ask you to respond directly to the content matter in the question that is posed. We ask that you not engage with your fellow candidates, but respond to the audience. Refrain from referencing other candidates' past statements. We want you to use your time to allow those present, present and in viewing online to learn about you. Each of you will have two minutes for an opening statement to answer each question and to provide a closing statement at the end. There's a timekeeper in the front who will hold up a clipboard to keep us on track today. And I'm pretty good at that. <laughs> opening statements will be done in alphabetical order and closing statements will be done in reverse alphabetical order while speaking order for the questions may vary. Now we have all that squared away and we both agree. <laughs> Let's get started with the opening statements. Ms. Chidji, you'll have two minutes. Either way. Hello, and thank you all for being here on this drizzly Saturday morning. My name is Terry Chigi, and I'm running for single member District 6, which includes all of Reagan High School and a small portion of Johnson High, Johnson High School. Um, I'm a product of Northeast, as is my husband. Uh, our daughter, adult daughter, graduated from Churchill High School, and our son graduated from Reagan. I have a st strong passion and commitment to this district and to public schools. My background is in education. I started as a student teacher in Northeast ISD and taught for nine years in first, second, and third grades. I then went on to be an assistant principal and a principal. The um, just greatest honor that I was given in Northeast was to open two Northeast schools. Not many principals get to do that. I, when um, Stone Oak Elementary opened, we were the only school in the Reagan area. And so I got to open that school and it was such an honor. I was there 13 years and got to know that community, got to know those children. Many of them are grown now. I knocked on a door the other day and one of my students came to the door at 29 years old. So that was exciting. Uh, I then went on from uh, Tuscany Heights and went to Central Office. At that time, I was 
was the executive director for school improvement and curriculum. And so I was over reading, writing, math, science, social studies, bilingual education, libraries, um, and so much more. I also, um, for performance and planning, did staff, did the staffing for the district. Um, I would appreciate your vote, and I'll turn it over to my opponent at this time. Thanks, uh, thank you for that. Um, first, I want to start off by offering my condolence to the Canyon Ridge community, in particular the mother and the five-year-old Canyon Ridge student who were killed the other day on Center Parkway, hit by an impaired truck driver, because um, ultimately serving as a trustee of the community, and it's really focuses about the kids and their education. So my condolences to all of that entire Canyon Ridge community, but in particular the family um, who lost their mother and um, five-year-old son, I believe, so that's tough. Um, my name is Steve Hilliard. I'm currently a trustee representing the Reagan District running for re-election. Um, my focus is on maximizing every child's God-given potential. Um, of course, listening and valuing teacher input, particularly the teachers in the classroom, so that they can love their job and reducing admin burdens. Of course, respecting parental rights and listening to them. And then ultimately, our job as the independent informed oversight as trustee is accountability and transparency to taxpayers, because um, about 65% of the taxpayers do not have a school age child, so that's important. Um, a little bit about me, um, product, product of this district as well, uh, Wincrest, Ed White, Roosevelt, my wife's also a product of this district as are all of our siblings, um, loved it. Uh, went to the Air Force Academy, 20 year combat veteran, pilot, uh, commander, uh, both at the squadron and deputy group level. Um, and all those skills I learned throughout my Air Force career and leadership translate to a trustee. I have a proven track record. You can go to my website, steveforTrustee.com, uh, and you can see all of the performance tab, what's going on. Um, ultimately, um, in the last three years, I've helped as part of the board, making sure we're continually complying with the law, um, listening to parents. We've gotten much better about getting parent surveys and input. We're seeing the results of those things. Um, and simply put, I've got the skills and need as a trustee, and I've demonstrated budget, policy, legal, compassion, understanding, and ultimately the integrity and courage to make principal decision making. Um, it's what I've demonstrated and what I'll continue to do. I'm asking for your vote on May 4th. Okay, thank you. So we'll get started with our questions. Mr. Hilliard, you'll be first to respond to question number one. Obviously, you've both expressed your desire to serve as a trustee for the Northeast ISD. What is one thing that you love about this district? I wish I had more than two minutes. This district is phenomenal, and quite frankly, the reason my wife and I chose when I retired from the Air Force, we chose Northeast. We, we looked North, we looked South, we looked West. We chose to come back home to Northeast because of the great education both my wife and I received all of our family members. We believe in it. We do so many things well in this district, um, not only uh, academically speaking, but the fine arts, um, athletics, all the curricular, extracurriculars. I've had parents talk to me, they say, well, I'm gonna go to charter, but they don't have choir, or they don't have Latin club. We offer so many things to make the whole child provide the well-rounded, and sometimes that event is what keeps the kid in school, because ultimately it's about academics. But we do so many things well. There's always room for improvement, that's the continuous process improvement's part of leadership, is recognizing the areas you're doing well, and continuing to do those well, highlight them, and areas that need improvement, identify those challenges, make a plan, communicate it clearly to all the stakeholders, and then move forward. Um, I could go on and on. I was just this morning over at Middle School Regional Choir, um, and all the parent volunteers, the choir teachers, everybody that's helping these kids have an opportunity to perform is just one of many examples. I saw kids out there on the athletic field. It, this is a wonderful district, so many opportunities. We have great parent support, great um, teachers and staff. They're phenomenal, they love their jobs, and pour so much into the kids, and the list goes on and on. Um, so I wish there was more, to, more time to really go on, but also, recognize that we can sit here and list the laundry list, but we have a wonderful district with great opportunities for every um, family to decide what's best for the kids. Oh, and one other thing I will mention, of course, our magnet program. That's something that makes us unique. It is, we are a school choice district. Uh, I know many people in our SMD that literally either go over to Roosevelt, down to Lee, um, Madison, the different magnet programs, because that's what's best fit, best fit for their child. And so we offer all those opportunities that you can't find everywhere else. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Ms. Chidji. What is one thing you love about this district? And I agree. Am I on? Mm -hmm. I agree. Uh, two minutes is certainly not enough. We are um, 
uh, destination district. People shop for schools and they land here. And that's one of the reasons I'm running for board is that I, I just want to keep that great community going. When you see the number of students we have, we, it doesn't feel that way. It feels like a small community, a small town. We um, have valuable teachers, quality staff, and the parents are so involved in everything. When you go on field trips, you see students. When you um, go to performances, there are, you see parents, and the parents are there at, at every event. They're so welcomed in. I, too, am so proud of the choice that we have. When they say, we need choice, you have choice in Northeast ISD. We have magnets that provide um, programs for students that aren't college-bound. Kids can go and learn about HVAC, or they can learn about plumbing and um, carpentry. We have MISA. We have so much choice in our district for college-bound students, for ROTC students, and for our students that want to go into some type of a trade. So I really, that makes me so much, um, that gives me so much pleasure to talk to students that say, I, you know, I don't want to go to college. Then we have, what, is, what are your interests? We have so many diverse students' needs, and we work hard in Northeast to meet all students' needs. I'm really proud of that, and I'm really proud of the, the schools and the, the parents and educators that work together. I, I think we're a team, I think we're a family, and I, I'm very, very proud of that. Thank you. Okay, some candidates have listed on their website the desire to advocate, advocate for parental rights. So to Ms. Chidji, can you please explain what parental rights mean to you and how a school board member implements those parental rights? Well, I certainly believe in parental rights. Um, as a principal, my door was always open to parents. Please come in, talk to me. How can I help you? What can we do for your children? We have the parent portal in Northeast where parents can go on and look at their child's grades, see how they're doing. I also think they have the right to be visible in the school. You can't go in Northeast in, in, in District 6 and not see parents working, volunteering, uh, going on field trips, they're in the cafeteria, they're in the workrooms. Parents have rights to be in our school and we welcome them in, so I think that is a huge right. I also think they have the right to look at curriculum and know what's being taught. They um, certainly can go on our website to see our scope and, scope and sequence that um, the curriculum department puts on. Parents are our children's first teachers, and so we want them to be part of our team, to work collaboratively with our, with our teachers. I think they have the right to have parent conferences, to be able to reach out to teachers when they have a question, to be able to email teachers and administrators when they have a concern, and to be heard. Parental rights are incredibly important to me. Okay, thank you. And Mr. Hilliard, can you please explain what parental rights mean to you and how a school board member implements those parental rights? Certainly, and I agree with much of what Ms. Chidi just said. Mrs. Chidi, sorry. Um, parental rights, parents are the first and primary educator of their children. They have the legal and moral authority. So much so, for those that don't know, FA Legal just got printed this last thing, which puts all parents' rights and responsibilities into one category. So it's very important. We have to respect them. The parents are the customer. They're making choices. We want them to choose Northeast. It is critical that we listen to parents. And even if we have a disagreement, let's sit down and see where we can find things. They have every right to see curriculum, every right to provide input on. They are, it's their choice, it's their child to decide what they want to do. We need to work and continue in that collaborative effort. We need to get even more parents on campus, in my opinion, because a parent-teacher relationship is critical. It's, it's a collaborative thing. Parents know what's going on at home. Teachers know what's going on at school. They can work and collaborate. We never want it to be adversarial or combative or the first time they're talking is when there is an issue with the child. We want those relationships built through constant, continual contact. I used to go read uh, to the second graders when my daughter was in second grade. It was great. We would take a couple of kids that were doing well, gave the teacher more time with some of the kids that needed a little bit of extra attention. But those relationships were built, so whenever they were stuck, we knew each other. We had the relationships. We do a good job. 
there's always room for discussion on better ways. We're con it's a continuous process, um, but we have to always listen to the parents because they are the customer. And so we want to make sure that we're making the best choices. And we're clearly identifying that, of course, we let them see curriculum, and it's important that they're involved in the curriculum decision. So each time we make decisions, we always have to remember in the education business who the customer is in that model, and it's the parents via their children and their child's education. So um, it's very important, we respect that, um, and we continue to work to make it the best possible collaborative relationship we can. Okay, thank you. So it feels like public education is under attack. Mr. Hilliard, what is your position on vouchers? And as a school board trustee, what will your plan what will be your plan to have a presence, voice, and compelling message during the next legislative session? Great question. So as a trustee, I support the position of the board. For the last decade, Northeast ISD has opposed vouchers. Um, so I don't really understand the relevance of the question, and I'll tell you why. We do not make that decision. That is a legislative decision. We have certain things within our control, local control, that we need to be focused on. We control local policy, goals, vision, accountability, that's the stuff we can focus on. The state legislature, there's big money on both sides of that conversation, right? I see you shaking your head. We know that. So, and here's a little fact for a couple of little facts. One, there was a big issue about this uh, in last spring, late in the legislative session. It turned political on our school board and it shouldn't have, because if you go back to June 13th, 2022, when we do legislative priority in a normal session, Mrs. Huey, who's been on board for 20 years, very involved with TASB, she actually recommended to the board we pool the whole discussion on vouchers. It's the two hour and 20 minute point in the video if anybody wants to go back and watch it. Um, nine months later, we get put on there. There's a resolution that shows up. There's no information about it. Um, two parents speak on it, uh, one from Razor Hand, Texas, that knew what our resolution was, yet only the trustees received it, yet they knew specifics of it. And then there was a reference to Senate Bill 8, which is a 50 page bill. I chose to abstain from it because as I said then, and I say now I represent single member district six community, um, and not necessarily what TASB wanted because they put out a message um, for 1,200 different school districts. Ultimately, we need to focus on doing what is in our control, and there's a lot to do. We obviously um, have a position at the board. We do normal legislative priorities every June, and that's important that we have those clear priorities. But also, last legislative session, when all this came up last spring, or Alamo Heights, Northeast, and Northwest ISD. Out of 21 trustees, how many do you think went up and actually individually advocated against vouchers? I'll give the answer, zero. So when people say that it's sometimes stuff is done at board meetings, but we really just have to work on what's in our control and focus on doing the best we can with whatever the Austin legislature decides. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Chidji, what is your position on vouchers? And as a school board trustee, what will be your plan to have a presence voice and compelling message during the next legislative session. So I certainly do agree that it is a legislative decision and not a board decision. However, if asked, I will always say I do not believe in, I do not support vouchers. I believe that public monies belong in public schools. I also believe that when you compare our public schools accountability system to private school accountability system and even home schools, there is not the same accountability system. There's nobody doing oversight for homeschooled students. There's nobody, the, the private schools are not required to take the stringent STAR tests that our students are given. And so they would be taking funds from our public schools. And I just believe in public school. I believe it's the great equalizer. I believe all schools deserve that. And I do not think it's okay for funds to go to private schools. I will advocate for this, and I have advocated this for this at the um, state legislature. I was a legislation. I will always legislature at the state capitol. <laughs> And I've done, I've done that many times, s stating my opinion, going with other teachers. Educators do not, public educators do not support it. They know how valuable public education is and we have to preserve it for our students, for all students, not just for some individual students that want, that want a particular um, private school. We give choice in our district. 
And so I will advocate for it, and I will. No, I do not support vouchers. Absolutely, do not support vouchers. Okay, thank you. So recent parent concerns have highlighted the need for checks and balances in school systems. The School Health Advisory Council, or SHAC, is one group that assists in ensuring local community values are reflected in health education instruction. So Ms. Chidji, who is ultimately responsible for curriculum content, and do you think groups such as SHAC are a viable part of the process? Thank you, great question. So I'm glad you asked about the curriculum. The curriculum was set by TEA. They supply the TEKS that are required for our teachers to teach. It is not the school board's uh, job to write curriculum. That, that is given to our district, to our teachers by TEA. And in saying that, I do think SHAC is a very important component of um, de uh, decision making. They take those TEKS and look to see what resources best will teach those, and then they make recommendations for the board. I do think the SHAC committee, while very valuable, I, I like that it has representation of parents. It's what I believe in as far as um, coming together to make decisions. There are parents, there are community and, and teachers on that committee. That's how decisions should be made. However, I think they're overreaching somewhat right now in that they are um, rewording some of the curriculum, some of the TEKS, and I, and I struggle with that. I think that's a problem. That doesn't mean to say I don't support the SHAC committee because I do think it's a very valuable committee. And Mr. Hillier, who is ultimately responsible for curriculum content, and do you think groups such as SHAC are a viable part of the process? Yeah, so, uh, slight nuance there, the board ultimately has to approve the curriculum. The TEKS indeed do come from there, and there are different publishers, but ultimately, the board is responsible for that. Actually, we have that coming up here, uh, with the science ones coming up here at the next board meeting. So we actually approve the curriculum because there's multiple publishers, and then the goal is to meet 100% of the TEKS. Yes, the shack is absolutely viable. It's actually required by law 28.004. Um, so when it comes to, there's a couple different areas. I won't go into the details of that. You want to go look in TEC 28.004. And it's the responsibilities of the shack and the requirements of the shack. Um, it's important. I'm proud of the work I've done, actually, because when I got on the board, the shack was closed. There was no bylaws. They been, disappeared in 2017. Um, it was mainly, uh, the representation was not truly all seven SMDs. Took a lot of work. Um, we work through it as a board. Uh, we now have a BDF local policy that guides the shack, as well as the bylaws that have been reinstated to give them clear guidance on roles and responsibilities. They make recommendations, the board ultimately decides. So, and as far as rewording, the, I think you're talking about the shack and some of the sex ed, they were not rewording TEKS. They were looking at some of the curriculum content and they wanted to make sure it was legally compliant, but nothing beyond that, that the, they made the recommendation of all the community, all seven SMEs were represented, full shack, uh, by a large majority approved the changes. The board had a discussion. We made the final decisions based on that. So it is very important that we listen. We're supposed to our community values. That is literally what the shack does. When we, it's much more transparent, very open now, um, which is what uh, I'm proud of work that I've helped facilitate to get that. We're getting a lot of different inputs, which is important because we are a very diverse district. And what may make sense up in the Ray Cluster may not make sense in the Roosevelt Cluster or down in Lee. And so it's important we hear from all members of the community so that everybody hears that. Um, but yes, we, the board, have that authority at the end of the day in compliance with the law, of course. And we need to make sure we good decisions and listening to all the stakeholders. Don't forget the teachers there, but it's very valuable when it comes to that, too. We've got to balance out what's going to be best. Thank you. All right, thank you. So special interest groups have a very strong opinion have very strong opinions on the education system in, in Texas. So Mr. Hillier, as a school board member, how would you respond to special interest groups who advocate for censorship of existing curriculum and resources perceived by them to conflict with their personal beliefs? Uh, great, thanks. Um, when we talk about special interest groups or censorship, first off, our number one goal is to protect the children and educate the children, clear cut. So that has to be our, remember, we have to have a very clear guiding moral compass 
and responsibility that's entrusted to us under the law, particularly Chapter 4 of the Education Code. Um, we have to respect the parent rights to choose for their kids, and we talked about parents getting a secret and understanding it, so there should be no problem there. Um, other parent groups don't have the right to force their viewpoints on any individual parent or vice versa. We have to respect each of the parents to make the choice that's appropriate for their family within the scope of the law, of course. There are some stuff that is compulsory, but other stuff that is optional, they get to decide. Um, of course, it needs to be in compliance with the law. That's very clear when people talk about censorship. I will say this, silencing is not good. I'm a big fan of diversity of thought. We should be able to have a conversation, and while we may disagree on a particular subject matter, we should do it respectfully, and we can agree to disagree, but it doesn't mean that one person is necessarily right or wrong, per se. We have different viewpoints. But silencing is bad. Debate is good. The problem we get is debates now have not turned into debating ideas, but we've tried debating individuals and smearing them. I've dealt with a fair amount of that myself, quite frankly, um, and that's okay. I'm standing on principle, and what I believe is right. I'm all for that. Um, logic, reason, truth always come in. Special interest groups, there's always special interest groups on both sides, or sometimes multiple sides of an issue. We need to, as trustees, make clear decision making based on logic, reason, the law, respecting parents' rights, valuing teachers' input. We have to be very clear on all of this. So when sometimes people get into this uh, special interest groups, which special interest group, which soft conversation, because this is a very nebulous question, quite frankly. It goes back to your decision making and that principal decision making process, very clear and being consistent and, and communicating with everybody. Even if you disagree with me, say I have a different viewpoint. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Chidji, as a school board member, how would you respond to special interest groups who advocate for censorship of existing curriculum and resources perceived by them to conflict with their personal beliefs? So first, I would listen. I think it's important to hear all sides. And I think it, I, I like what you said about listen respectfully and, and um, collaboratively. However, I do think special interest groups are playing a big part in some decision making that takes place in schools. And I think in our public schools, I just don't think there is a, is a place for one or two or five or 10 people to come in and make decisions for an entire library or an entire uh, subject content. I do think parents have the right to say, I don't want my child to read that book, or I don't want my child to talk to, to have that, um, that aspect of the sex ed, there are modules and so forth. But I don't think they should be allowed to make that decision for the entire library or the entire curriculum. I think it's important that parents have rights, but I also think it is important that our kids are thinkers and problem solvers and um, are able to study and learn and read um, history. And um, I believe that they should have access to um, a full spectrum of library books and not censored library books. So I um, am opposed to as much censorship, not all. There, are, there's a, there is a good, strong procedure that we have in place in Northeast, actually in the state of Texas, to look at library books with a committee to say, looking at this rubric, is this appropriate at this grade level? Do we need to move it to another grade level? Is it not appropriate at all? And if this worked for many, many years, I think we should continue to use that procedure. Thank you. Charter schools continue to expand and be built within this district. So Ms. Chidji, how do you feel about the expansion of charter schools in this community? And what can NEISD do, do to retain these students? So charter schools are not all created the same. They don't all um, accept the same children. Some do, some don't. I struggle that, that um, taxpayer dollars go into building those schools. When you look at where they are located, some of them are located down the street, next door, very close to a public school that had to go out to the taxpayers to raise bond money to build the school, where those schools are built um, with taxpayer dollars when we don't need a school there. 
However, parents go there because they might be dissatisfied with their public school, and I think it's important that we find out why. We give so much choice in Northeast. We have such quality in Northeast, but if they're wanting to go there, let's find out why and provide their students with what they seem to be seeking out. Sometimes I've spoken to parents that have gone, and when they have left our schools, they didn't talk to anybody when they left. They didn't see if we could resolve their issues. And so many of them come back to our, to our public schools as well. So I, um, I would work hard to keep our kids in our, in our system and by giving so much choice. Again, I said that's what I'm most proud of in our district. We have so much choice and so much of that is not offered in the charter school. Okay, thank you. Mr. Hilliard, how do you feel about the expansion of charter schools in this community? And what can NEISD do to retain these students? Great. First off, it's not how I feel, it's what I think. Sometimes words matter, and we need to be smart. We need to talk about what we think, because feelings, when you make emotion-based decisions, sometimes you can make poor decisions. Uh, passion, will by poli or passion frequently rules politics, and frequently rules uh, in, uh, uh, unwisely. But I think Plato said that. Sorry, I should remember from my high school uh, literature class back down. My real question is, we've been trying to get this information, uh, I've asked the superintendent, as I think other treasury have, about exit surveys. We need to listen to the parents that are leaving, because once again, they're the customers in the educational marketplace. We understand why they're leaving. Can we resolve it before they leave? What is the issue? So if we see that developing, um, it creates a very big issue, and I understand some of the points Mr. Chigi is making. What we need to do as a board, because once again, we have to remember our roles as trustee, we set mission goals, visions, and then there's certain things we can do. So let's understand, and if we have shortcomings, if we can get the parents that are leaving to provide us that, let's understand if it's a viable thing that we can fix. Sometimes you're not gonna be able to solve every problem, right, for everything. We need to make our district the district of choice for every family that lives in AIC, the first choice, over charter, over private, over any other option they have out there. Once again, Charter, that's a Texas legislator issue. As a trustee, I don't get to say I don't want that charter to open or not. We don't, that's not in our authority. So once again, we need to know what our role is, but what we can do to advocate and or affect change. So particularly, we need to find out where the problems are, which ones realistically the board has control over, because there's some things you're not gonna be able to solve, and let's see if we can make changes. We also need to continue to communicate. We do a good job, I think, of sharing information about the different choices in the magnet programs and the opportunities here through language and everything else. So it's a, it creates a problem, and there is a definite negative effect on the public school. It also comes to a funding issue. So ultimately, we need to focus on what we can control and try and make Northeast the first choice for every, every child. Okay, thank you. Mr. Hillier, how do you discuss topics where there is strong disagreement and remain civil? In other words, how can the school board work together when trustees have different opinions? The golden rule is a simple answer. It starts with respect, and diversity of thought is not a bad thing. Uh, simply put, before I got on the board, there were 700 unanimous votes without zero dissent. We've had more robust conversations, and we don't always agree. The key is that we're collaborative, collaboratively discussing stuff, trying to get to the best solution that works for the entire district. You gotta remember we don't operate in a vacuum. It's not just s and six rating cluster that any decision the board of corporate makes impacts the entire district. We don't make decisions by individual cluster or district. We do it for the entire district. So it's very important that we're doing it. But you might be willing to listen first and not automatically oppose the idea because of the individual asking the question. I've asked lots of questions. So one of the things I've always said from day one is I ask the hard question, the hard questions. The questions that the average parent or taxpayer wants to know. If we can't give them a clear, reasonable answer, then we have a problem. We can't speak in edge speak as the superintendent likes to talk about. We need to speak very clearly, very plain language when we're talking about issues. So while people can disagree, that's fine, but how you go about it and the personal attacks is where the problem is. We have Robert Rules of Order, which is supposed to control the decorum of the board. Sometimes that's not being followed, um, and that is up to the board president and other people to have to do it. So we need to get back, in my opinion, regardless of viewpoint, listen first, discuss, we can agree, disagree, do it respectfully, and then we can move on from there. We take a board vote, 
whatever the board majority is, as is our board operating procedures, that becomes the position of the district. I've been in the minority on those before, and after the vote, this is the position of the district. I was the only one who voted not to mask the kids. Afterwards, I had to clearly say the board chose that they were going to make the masking requirement. That was what the answer had to be the day after the vote. I respect it. I didn't necessarily personally, but at that point, my personal opinion doesn't matter. I have to remember my role as a trustee in my representation that I'm supposed to do. Okay, thank you. Ms. Chidji, how do you discuss topics where there is strong disagreement and remain civil? In other words, how can the school board work together when trustees have differing opinions? Thank you. As an 18-year veteran principal, I have many opportunities to work with people that we, quite frankly, did not disagree. I always seek to understand and to be understood. So I want to hear all sides of the opinion, of the all opinions, all sides of the argument. I think you lead positively, respectfully, collaboratively. Let's everybody be heard and then come to a collaborative, compromising solution. We don't always agree, but we can respectfully disagree. And I think that the role of the board should be role models in that decision making for our district, for our administrators, for our other leaders. And so I think it's very important that we talk collaboratively, we hear each other out, we try to understand all sides of it, and do the research and look at the data and get all the information out on the table, not just an emotional, passionate viewpoint, but spend some time and look at everything, all of the details, all of the facts, and then come to a decision together. And I agree, it is not, we won't, a board does not always vote the same way. They will disagree. But then it is on the board member, whoever, whichever way that the vote went, to support it, to back it, and to be part of a team. And I believe in being part of a team and leading in a team way, in a collaborative, respectful way. Okay, thank you. And Ms. Chidji, what was your level of involvement or volunteerism with the NEISD before deciding to run? Please describe how you spent your time with the district and the areas you provided support. So my own children are adult children. One graduated from Churchill, one from Reagan. Throughout their lifetime as students, I was, and I look back on this and I'm exhausted thinking about it, but I was always the room mom. I was on the booster club board. I was on the dance team spirit board. If there was a board, I was on it and I was often leading it. I had the good fortune, the great fortune, to be on the first booster club at Reagan High School. I was also on the committee to choose the mascot. That's a great example where I listened because I would never have chosen a snake. That's what the kids wanted and that's what many of the parents wanted. So I helped lead that decision making as a volunteer. Recently, I go into classrooms and read. As a member of DAR, we go in and we read, we the kids, we teach them about the Constitution. And I really have enjoyed that. I just recently went to Oak Grove and read to a group of pre-K students about Washington crossing the Delaware. I also, not with Northeast, but I just stepped down as president of St. Thomas Episcopal School where I volunteered on that board. I helped pick playground equipment. I looked at curriculum. So I have a lifetime of serving in schools. And I'm also a member of all of the Johnson PTAs and Reagan PTAs and then some other PTAs throughout the district where they were trying to get their numbers up. So I became a member there. So I've definitely had a lifetime of volunteering. Thank you. And Mr. Hilliard, what was your level of involvement or volunteerism with NEISD before deciding to run? 
Please describe how you spent your time with the district and the areas you provided support. Okay, great, thank you. Um, so I have to go back quite a few years since I've been on the board, since before I decided to run, but um, as I mentioned earlier, I used to go in and volunteer reading in the classrooms um, for both of my kids at the different grade levels at Wilderness Oak. Um, also did the watchdogs there. I did adopt a pilot, which is a program not a lot of people know about, but it was tied to my work where I taught the entire fourth grade, some science, some math, um, some reading different lessons uh, every year for about five years over at Wilderness Oak to get the impact and I still get people who every now and then see me at HEB and say, hey, that's Mr. Pilot Man, which I always laugh about. It puts a smile on my face when they say that with their parents there. Um, additionally, um, since then, I'm a member of all the Reagan PTAs, but uh, my really volunteer service has been my board service, which I gladly do. Um, going to Leadership Northeast, uh, NEFA award grants, when we give them out, try to attend to everything that I can within my work and family schedule, of course. Um, with countless hours on the board, which I do gladly serve in our community. Um, that's, I, by nature, have been service oriented since obviously my time in the military, and that's just that. But the real question really would be is the level, what is it you need as a trustee, which is a leadership skill set, which is what I bring uh, combat experience, squadron commander, work with numerous diverse groups of people, had led them very successfully. I was the number one rated squadron commander at the Air Force One base, of it's called Andrews Air Force Base. I was the first time the non-Air Force One squadron commander was rated number one. I have proven leadership skills and that volunteering is absolutely important. And realize people also volunteer out that. I do Bible study, I'm a facilitator for one of our small groups. So volunteerism can look a lot of different ways. Definitely important that we have volunteers in school and I'm actually wanting to get parents even more back on campus because that goes back to building that relationship with the teachers and the staff, that collaboration. Um, but just recognize that our role as trustee is different than but it's a different type of volunteerism. Okay, thank you. Well, that has concluded our questions for today. So let's go to closing statements. Again, each person will have two minutes for closing statements and we'll go in reverse alphabetical order. So Mr. Hilliard, we'll begin with you. Great, thank you. First off, thank you to the NECPTA for hosting the forum um, and having an opportunity to speak here to the members of here and also on Facebook, of course. Uh, my name is Steve Hilliard. I currently am the trustee. I'm seeking re-election to represent you, the parents, the taxpayers, and of course, the kids, because that's what it's all about, but it's really via the parents and the taxpayers for single member district six, which is mainly the Reagan High School cluster, uh, 1604, 281, a little bit does flow over to some of the Johnson area up there in the northeast corner of that particular area. Um, I've done board service, I think my performance has shown. Anybody that wants to go to my website, steveforTrustee.com, there's a performance tab and shows you what I've done as a trustee, working collaboratively but individually uh, in the areas that I'm allowed to, because generally everything's done as a board corporate, but working on initiatives, getting agenda items. Um, I'm proud of the service that I've done. I can promise to continue to make sure that parents and children are primary, that always going to be as transparent as possible. There's a few things we can't talk about, like some of the security stuff we're not allowed to talk about because that's done uh, close or executive session. So, but we should be able to answer clearly and in plain English to anybody that. Um, I'm gonna continue to ask questions. Our job is independent and informed oversight. That's the role of a trustee. We are not there to do that. We're above and over the seven board of corporate trustees own all the real property in the district and have the responsibility for budget policy, goal setting, uh, good governance and evaluating the superintendent who's supposed to do all the day-to-day -day stuff, which is a different piece. Um, we always, always have to keep the taxpayers in mind. We have a $39 million budget. The next board that takes on this budget this year, there's gonna be some tough decisions. And quite frankly, um, we're gonna have to, staffing is probably gonna have to change because 85% of the budget is staffing under the primary budget. Um, so we can't forget, we have to value the teachers in the classroom and put in staff. Listen, work collaboratively. My name is Steve Hilliard, steveforTrustee.com. May 4th is election day. Early voting is April 22nd through 30th and see for trustee on Facebook for some videos, thanks. Thank you, Ms. Chidji. I too wanna thank everybody for taking your Saturday and being here, and I'd also like to thank Mr. Hilliard for his good answers. Um, I humbly ask for your vote today. I promise to serve as a quality board member. I've, I've served in this district. I've had many years of leadership with teachers and students. I will work to keep our district safe, 
to have that fiscal responsibility. It is going to be a big job to oversee this deficit budget. I've had a lot of years of uh, overseeing budgets of schools and the curriculum department, so I, I, I understand that there are some tough decisions coming. I also want to advocate for our teachers. Our teachers have struggled right now. They feel under attack, and I, I really want to work with our parents and our teachers to get that respect to our teachers that they so, they so desire. And I, um, I will work hard, and I will work hard across the district. I will promise to attend the um, activities. There's so many great activities, and there's so many ways that we should be saying thank you to our educators, and thank you to our students. Our students make us proud every day, and I want to serve our students. That's what we're here for. We're here for our students. And, and I care very much about this district. I care very much about keeping it a destination district and meeting kids and serving our kids and continuing with the great choices that we, we have in our district. Okay, thank you. Well, thank you both for being here today and for letting us all learn more about your views. I think I'm ready to enroll. <laughs> and I, I really uh, personally want to commend both of you for modeling such a high level of uh, a civil discourse. Uh, everyone appreciates your willingness to be here and engage with this group and your willingness to serve in this way. So now I'll turn it back over to the Northeast ISD Council of PTS, PTA President, Debbie Weissmuller. Thank you so much, and thank you again to our candidates for being here and participating today. I want to thank our audience online as well as our in-person audience, and a reminder that our candidates will be around for a few minutes after um, we finish. As they reminded you also, um, early voting does start Monday, April 22nd, and runs through um, April 30th, um, and election day is Saturday, May 4th. PTA is a membership organization um, that advocates, and we do have PTAs on all 67 of our campuses. If you'd like to seek out the PTA um, to join um, individually on your campus, or you can visit joinpta.org where you can find all of those groups. Um, we hope you've enjoyed our forum. We thank you for your support and advocacy on behalf of the nearly 60,000 students here um, in NEISD because the future of Texas really is in our public schools. Thanks.